Hello, David Diga Hernandez here, and you are watching Spirit Church on the Encounter TV network. The scripture declares, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you'll be my witnesses. You see, the Holy Spirit is the key to the power-filled Christian life. But many want to know, how do I receive the Holy Spirit? How do I receive him in my life and in my ministry? I'm going to tell you how, but first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some anointed worship, and then we're going to get right into this message. It's going to bless you. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. I sing praises to your name, oh Lord, praises to your name, oh Lord, for your name. And greatly to be praised I sing praises to your name Oh Lord, praises to your name Oh Lord, for your name is great and great Give glory to your name, oh God, glory to your name, oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I give glory to I often receive messages from people who want to know, how do I receive the Holy Spirit? They tell me, Brother David, I know what the Holy Spirit can do. I know who the Holy Spirit is. I know how important it is to have his power. But how do I receive him in my life? How do I activate that power in my ministry, in my everyday living? I want to experience the presence of the Holy Spirit. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to share with you a truth. And this is perhaps one of the most liberating truths concerning the Holy Spirit that I could share with you. And I know that when I discovered this truth, it set me free. And it caused me to go from religious thinking and fearful living to righteous thinking and faith thinking and powerful living. This was the difference right here. But I'm going to read the portion of Scripture, Romans chapter 8, verses 9 through 16. And in this portion of Scripture, we find this truth that will liberate you. The scripture declares, but you are not controlled by your sinful nature. You are controlled by the spirit if you have the spirit of God living in you. And remember that those who do not have the spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to him at all. Now that's key. We're going to come back to that in a moment. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, He will give life to your mortal bodies by this same Spirit living within you. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. 
So you have not received the spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you have received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father for his spirit. This is so beautiful. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. Now, this portion of scripture has so much powerful truth packed into it. But I want to pull out just the theme that you belong to God because you have the Holy Spirit within you. In fact, the scripture says that if people don't have the spirit of God within them, that they don't belong to God at all. You've heard it said everyone is a child of God, but the scripture declares that only those with the Holy Spirit actually belong to him. So what is the liberating truth that I want to pull from this portion of scripture? The liberating truth I want to pull from this portion of scripture is this. If you have put your faith in Jesus, if you're hearing this message right now, and everything in you desires the things of God, and you want to know how to receive them. You want to know how to receive that fresh baptism. You want to know how to receive his gifts, his power, his presence. That means you already have the Holy Spirit within you. That you have already received the Spirit of God is a liberating truth for the believer. Now, the question then comes, well, then if I already have them, why am I not seeing the manifestation of the things described in Scripture? It's quite simple. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23 says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there are many truths I can pull from this portion of Scripture too. But from that one verse, we find that you are body, soul, and spirit. Your spirit is your communication with God. Your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions, what you think, what you want, what you feel. And your physical body is your earth suit. It's also the temple of the Holy Spirit. So your body can be holy even as your spirit and soul are sanctified. But here we see that man exists as body, soul, and spirit. Now, you are not your body, you are not your soul. Your spirit is the place of your identity. And Jesus said in John chapter 7, verse 38, he who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. In other words, the Holy Spirit works from the inside out. You've already received him in your spirit. It's just a matter now of releasing him into your soul and into your body. Now, how do you do that? You surrender to the Holy Spirit. And I just taught on this, how to surrender to the Holy Spirit, which is another lesson you should look up. But here I want to focus in on just this truth that you have already received him. He already dwells in you. First Corinthians chapter six, verse 17 says, but the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. There are not two natures within you. There are not two identities within your being. You are one with the Holy Spirit. You do not have two spirits in you. You have one spirit in you and your spirit has become one with the Holy Spirit. It's a divine union. It's a holy fellowship. It's this place of deep surrender where you've stepped into this oneness with God through fellowship with the Holy Spirit. So since you have this already, since you're already one with him, since all the peace, all the love, all the joy, all the power that could ever be available already resides in you, then it's a matter of not receiving him, but releasing him. And this is the truth that can set you free. To know that you already have the Spirit of God. To know that all the power of heaven dwells in you. The scripture declares in 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. We are one with the Father. We are one with the Son. We are one with the Spirit. We walk in that place of unity. So as I said, it's about getting what's within you to come without. Now, the enemy works from the outside in. The enemy works through temptation, through the world, through what you see, through what you hear. And he tries to permeate your being through entering in from the outer life. 
But the Holy Spirit does just the opposite. First, he comes as a seed planted in your spirit, but he comes in fullness. He comes in power. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. The same spirit who was upon the apostles dwells in you. The same Holy Spirit who moved David, the psalmist, to write poetic stanzas of worship dwells in you. The same Holy Spirit who was like fire in in the prophet's bones dwells in you. The excellent spirit in Daniel. The Spirit of God who hovered above the face of the deep in the book of Genesis. The Holy Spirit who gave dreams to Joseph. This same Holy Spirit, the one who was with the early church, the one who was with the apostles, the one who inspired revelation in John to where he penned this book that gave us apocalyptic imagery and magnificent insight into the glory of God. He dwells in you. You already have him. The question is not, do you have him? The question is, does he have you? The question is not, how do I receive more of the Holy Spirit? The question is, how does he receive more of you? The Holy Spirit is not deposited in portions, for the eternal cannot be divided. When the Holy Spirit comes, he comes in fullness and in power. All that he was, is, or ever shall be dwells in you now. He is not a reward for the super spiritual. He's the only chance that any of us ever have at being spiritual. And he has come to dwell in you today. If you confess Jesus as Lord, if you've put your faith in him, if you are seeking the face of God, then you have the Holy Spirit in you. Otherwise, why would you desire to do so? Otherwise, why would you have desire to give your life to Jesus? You have the Holy Spirit. Now, surrender is the key. Everything he is, you have. Everything he is, you are too. And he desires to make you like Jesus. He desires to make you godly. How do you receive the Holy Spirit? You already have him. The question is, how do you release him to work in your life? From the inside out, it's surrender. Everything God offers you, you already have. All the faith, all the power, everything dwells in you now, right this moment. And it's a well that needs to be dug. And this is why Jesus said, out of your innermost being, out of your spirit, will flow rivers of living water from your spirit to your soul to your body to be made manifest in your everyday life. This is the reality of the spirit. You already have him. I want to pray with you now. And I'm going to ask that the Holy Spirit would release his power in your life from the inside out, that he would transform you from the inside out. All you have to do in this moment now, you don't need to beg. You just need to ask. You don't need to strive or fight or struggle. You just need to surrender. So in this moment now, the power of the Holy Spirit is going to flow and he's going to touch your life. Right now, believe with me, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that one receiving this prayer now. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, to overcome that one. Overwhelm us in the rivers of living water. We want to be washed away in the river. We yield ourselves to you. I want you right now just to lift your hand receive this. There's power here. Say, Holy Spirit, I yield my life, my being, to you. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for your power now flowing, and I give you the glory. In Jesus' name, I want you to say it because you agree. Say, Amen. Well, that is it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church, there you are up on the screen. We love you. We're praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you'd like information on how you can join the Spirit family, then go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch and join the Spirit family today, now over 6,000 members strong from all around the world. You'll get an email from us with a brand new teaching every single week. 
a brand new worship song from Stephen Moctezuma, and you can reply to that email for prayer support from our ministry staff. So join the Spirit family today. It's 100% free. I want to read now your comments from my video, How to Activate the Anointing. Now, if you'd like me to potentially read your comments in the coming weeks, then go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe. And when you subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell so that you can be made aware of when our new content is released. I want to read your comments now from How to Activate the Anointing. Rickus Kruger writes, I started watching your sermons lately, and they have truly touched and taught me amazing things about Holy Spirit, anointing, gifts of the Spirit. I love all of it. It's really amazing. I am already a born-again Christian, but there is always room to grow, and I believe you have helped me with that. Well, I do believe this is the Holy Spirit's channel. You notice that many of my teachings are on the Holy Spirit, prayer, the presence of God, miracles, faith. These are the topics I love. And by the way, I, I noticed a lot of people calling him Holy Spirit. I prefer to call him the Holy Spirit because as you know, we are one spirit with him. So my spirit is holy. I'm a Holy Spirit. You're a Holy Spirit. He is the Holy Spirit. Coach Miranda writes, Hello, you know I just discovered you today while I was browsing on Facebook. I saw a video where you were asked to talk about the Holy Spirit. I got intrigued and I did research on YouTube. This is the result of my findings. I'm so honored to know you actually exist and I am already a member of Spirit Church. You are an answered prayer. God bless you. Well, God bless you and thank you for joining the Spirit family. Thalber 9 writes, Thank you for this timely message. I was on the verge of giving up. And I had a dream of a father who never left his son, but was always near despite his son always complaining. I've been trying to do ministry on my own strength and was feeling burnt out. May God enlarge your territory and bless you mightily in Jesus' name. And Sophia DeBolt writes, This was such an awesome teaching. I felt this speak to me so much and has caused me to look at my life of faith differently. I can't wait to see where God takes me. And I just want to thank all of you for helping me with my faith. If it wasn't for your teachings... I wouldn't have the relationship with Jesus that I have right now. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. And I hope that the Lord will continue to use your ministry to help others. Sophia, nothing brings me more joy than to know that this ministry is helping others grow in Christ. That, is, that just blesses me beyond words. And really, Sophia is one example of the thousands who are impacted by this ministry every single month. Did you know I preach the gospel to about two to three million people every single month on average? And it's your support that enables us to keep doing this. Look, you've been watching the content. You've been getting blessed by it. Now is the time to support. Support today through a one-time gift or a monthly gift. Become my partner on a monthly basis. Your support will help us continue to do media and events and continue to spread the gospel all around the world and build the believer. We like to keep our events free. We like to keep the media free because Jesus said, freely receive, freely give. And he funds the gospel, the kingdom work through people like you. This is what the scripture says in Romans chapter 10, verse number nine. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We know that. That's powerful. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. And it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. As the scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Verse 14 says, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. Send me to the nations. Send me to preach the gospel. We want to win souls. We want to build believers. Become my partner at $30 or more a month, and I will send you either Carriers of the Glory, 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare, or Encountering the Holy Spirit in every book of the Bible. That will be my gift to you, an initiation gift for you becoming my partner. Just a special thanks. But do a gift today of any amount, one time or monthly. Some of you can do large one time. Some of you can do small one time. Some of you can do large monthly. Some of you can do small monthly. But whatever you do, do it today. Do it and send me to the nations. Do it and help me preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit through events and media.
Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.